and uh, here we go. So, <clears throat> first step, ID the question. Let's do that. Um, the conclusion drawn to the left depends on which of the following assumptions. So they're saying one of these is an assumption. Um, so we definitely got an assume assumption question on our hands here. So we immediately know that we are going to look for a conclusion, assumption, and premise. So go ahead, I'll give you a, a moment here. Read this paragraph and let's identify and write down. It's important that you write this down on, you should have a scratch pad there with you, whether it's a piece of paper or not for now, that's fine. Um, but don't do it in your head. Don't remember in your head. Use your brain for thinking. Um, so you have 45 seconds to go ahead and read this uh, passage and identify these, uh, the, the conclusion and the premise. Okay, so let's, uh, they've given us a little help here on this one, the conclusion. Uh, sometimes these words like therefore can help us identify the conclusion, but we want to just think about them and make sure that's the conclusion, and this seems to be it, that um, automobiles um, must keep their new uh, models within the bounds um, of uh, what is legal and socially acceptable. And why is this the case? The premise will tell us why. So we ask ourselves, why is this? Well, because, well, we should find something else in the paragraph because remember, we said the conclusion and the premise are stated. So we can point to them. Here's the conclusion. I can point to this. Let's find the premise. Um, as a result of market pressures, automobile manufacturers are able to innovate only within a certain set of parameters. So while car enthusiasts might be interested in seeing dramatically different vehicles, the buying public rarely wants to venture outside their comfort zone. So that's why. That's why automobile manufacturers must keep their new models within the bounds of what is legal and socially acceptable because buyers, not car enthusiasts, buyers want comfort zone. So, the assumption, remember, we said is unstated, so I'm not going to be able to point to it like I can point to the conclusion and the premise. Um, and we could spend some time thinking about what the assumption is, but I doubt I'm going to come up with the exact same words that the answer choice has. Um, and sometimes you'll find that we, we'll, we'll try that as well. Um, but for now, let's just leave the assumption. Let's not think too much about what it is. Um, and let's take a look at the answers and apply our two rules. Remember, one, must this be true for this argument to make sense? Um, when we find what, which one of those we, we think might be the case, we'll negate it. And also look out for answer choices that combine some language from the conclusion and some language from the premise. Because remember, we said that sometimes the assumption links the conclusion and the premise with language. So let's take a look. Answer choice A. The tastes of the car enthusiasts only gradually trickle down to influence the average car buyer. Okay, this is what I sort of call the FYI answer choice. Um, so um, <clears throat> this doesn't have to be true for the argument to make sense. Why does it have to be true that the tastes of the car enthusiasts only gradually trickles down? Here's an extreme word. We should be really conscious of extreme language in answer choices. Um, a lot of times it points to an answer choice that isn't correct. Um, it can be, but if it's correct, that extreme word must also be correct. And why must it be the case that the taste of the car enthusiast only gradually trickles down for this argument to make sense? Let's get rid of, let's get rid of A. Okay. Um, now, how about B? Small automobile manufacturers have more leeway for making innovations to their automobiles than larger. So small ones versus larger ones, not sure what that has to do with this argument. Let's go ahead and eliminate B. How about C? The buying public's comfort zone is composed of vehicles that are considered legal and socially acceptable on public roads. Well, right off the bat, something comes to my mind, which is that the word comfort zone 
and socially and legally acceptable is this is all language that appeared in the in the uh, premise comfort zone and in the conclusion and if you notice we don't really even need our paragraph we have the information here um, so I, I like this answer choice let's leave it for now um, and talk about D innovations in car design that could be viable in one climate are often not so could and often again these are sort of words that are a little wishy-washy I'm not sure what they mean I'm looking for an answer choice that must be true and here I'm not sure why it must be true that innovations in car designs that could be viable in one climate are often not practical in others we also didn't really talk about um, climate so I'm not sure why this must be true oh whoops I don't want to answer that to eliminate that uh, all right, and the last one, some cars. So we're going to talk about this in a moment here, but here's again some um, important language um, that must be true for the argument to make sense. So some cars that are very fuel efficient are too small to be legally driven on the freeway. Why is why must it be true that some cars that are very fuel efficient are too small? Um, this and this word some doesn't seem to be supported by the must be trueness that I need. Um, so let's go ahead and, and get rid of E as well. I think C is the answer choice, but we said that we can apply a second test to assumption answer choices that we think are correct. So um, we're going to negate this answer and, and see if our um, argument falls apart. So let's take a look here. So the buying public's comfort zone is composed of vehicles that are considered legal and socially acceptable on public roads. Let's negate it and say the buying public's comfort zone is not just composed of vehicles that are considered legal and socially acceptable on public roads. So if, it's tr if this is true, if we negate it, does this argument fall apart that they must be um, within the bounds of legal and socially acceptable? They don't have to be within the bounds of legally and socially acceptable if people's comfort zone are not just those. So if we negate this answer choice, the argument falls apart. I'm pretty sure this is right. Let's pick it and see if we're correct. Nice. So we did our process just like robots there. We identified the question. We uh, worked the paragraph knowing that there would be a conclusion and an assumption and a premise. We tested the answer choices based on what must be true for the argument to make sense. We tested what we thought was the right answer by negating it. Um, we also identified an answer choice that had language that connected the premise and the conclusion. So um, that's our process on all assumption questions. Let's, let's try one more. Okay, so let's go ahead and identify this. On which of the following assumptions does the argument to the left rely? So we know this is an assumption question. Great, so we should find a conclusion, an assumption, and a premise. Awesome. So, I'll give you a few seconds here to go ahead and read that and write down the conclusion and the premise. Okay, so again we saw this uh, therefore um, so I think this is the conclusion here. Let's double check. The, re there, the restaurant manager therefore is generally less aware of any dissatisfied customers than the service workers. So uh, the restaurant manager is less uh, aware than um, our uh, service workers. Good. And why is this true? Well, because um, the feedback reported is minimized. Um, and twisted. So the service worker um, minimizes um, and twists uh, the info to look good. Good. So that didn't take a long time to actually paraphrase that and I found that really helpful on the test and I use my GMAT pad that they give me to, to do that. Um, so I can sort of leave all this language behind and just get to the meat of the logic. 
So again, let's just leave the assumption part and ask ourselves whether these answer choices have to be true. Let's look for language that connects the premise and the conclusion, and then we'll test what we think is right. So answer choice A, must it be true that restaurant service workers should resolve customer complaints? I'm always weary of words like should in answer choices. Uh, why must it be true that restaurant workers should resolve complaints um, for this logic about restaurant managers um, being less aware, okay? So I think we can get rid of this guy. This doesn't have to be true. Um, great. And how about B? Restaurants should put in place incentive programs to encourage service workers to relay customer feedback. Great. They should. Congratulations. But that doesn't have to be true for this argument to make sense. So let's get rid of that one as well. And how about C? Restaurant managers are generally more skilled at handling disgruntled customers than our service workers. So I don't see any language that appears in the conclusion and the premise, and I don't know why this has to be true, that they are generally more skilled. Um, I'm not sure exactly what generally even that might mean in this context. So here immediately I see this extreme word. Let's see if it's, um, uh, we're, we'll be able to test it as to whether it's appropriate. The only way that rest, must it be true that the only way that restaurant managers receive information about negative customer feedback is through the service workers. So I see information about negative customer feedback, um, which is in the conclusion and in the premise. Um, and, uh, through the service workers also in the premise and restaurant managers and their awareness is also in the conclusion. So let's leave this for a moment um, and we'll test whether or not this only must be true. Uh, and E, some restaurant service workers care more about good customer service than about the ways in which others perceive their job performance. Again, I'm not sure what some means in an answer choice where this must be true, uh, at least in this context, it doesn't hold up. Um, uh, I don't know why it must be true that some restaurant workers care more, um, so I can get rid of E. I think D is the answer, but let's test it. Let's negate it. Let's say that it says the only way that restaurant managers receive information about negative customers is through service workers. Let's just say um, uh, this is not the only way. This is not the only way that restaurant managers receive information about um, negative customers is through service workers. So if there's other ways they get information, then this conclusion might not be true that they are less aware. Maybe they get information from other sources like a survey box um, or the customers directly. So the conclusion is that they're less aware because they, of the info they get from the um, service worker. And if it was true that the only way they got info was from the service workers, then yes, this assumption, this conclusion would be true. Um, and so this is the assumption. Um, and we can also tell that when we negate it, when we say there's other ways that they receive information, the argument falls apart. Um, so this should be our answer. Great. Awesome. So let's try one more assumption question. Go ahead and work this one on your own and we'll take a look at it together.